Hey, hey, Math Moment Makers. Today we speak with Shelly Yearly all about how we can rethink fractions in the mathematics classroom. Shelly is a fellow Ontario educator, researcher, an author, and she's held many roles mm -hmm. over her career in education, uh, which you're going to hear about in today's episode, including her most recent role as she has returned to the classroom. Yeah, stick with us. And you're going to learn uh, why you should focus on unit fractions before rushing to algorithms for operating with fractions, uh, what the fraction learning pathway is and how it can help you in your classroom. And finally, why students and many adults struggle with fractions and what we can do about it. Cal, let's go. All right, let's do this. Welcome to the Making Math Moments That Matter podcast. I'm Kyle Pierce. And I'm John Orr. And we are from MakeMathMoments.com. And together, with you, the community of math moment makers worldwide who want to build and deliver math lessons that spark curiosity, fuel sense making, and ignite those teacher moves. Welcome, my math moment maker friends, mm -hmm. uh, to an episode where uh, we get to bring on another fellow Ontario educator, Exciting. Uh, but not just educator, a researcher, also an author, and just an all round awesome person. Uh, you are going to do a lot of learning today, right there, John? For sure, for sure. And you might be looking at the length of the episode and you're like, oh, sometimes, I, you know, those 30 minute episodes hit the right spot. Those 40 minute episodes are perfect. And you're like, this one's a little longer, guys. And it's because we, we had such a great conversation and uh, you are going to get a lot out of this. So stick with us. And hey, let's just go right now. Let's get right into it. Here we go. Hey, hey there, Shelly. Thanks for joining us here on the Making Math Moments That Matter podcast. Uh, we're really excited to have uh, an Ontario friend. Mm -hmm. uh, we were just discussing, we're, uh, you know, I, I don't think we're dealing with the same thunderstorm that's going through. I think you might have a different one in, in your part of Ontario. However, one. Uh, you know, as, uh, as soon as I said thunderstorm, I'm like, maybe it's the same one. Who knows? But uh, we are we are super excited to have you on the show. And uh, we're, we really want to dive into uh, a bit of your backstory and mm. also dive into some of the work around a concept that, uh, you know, that is near and dear to uh, both uh, John and my heart. Uh, so how are you doing tonight? And uh, how, how are things on your end of Ontario? I'm well. Um, I live in a beautiful part of Ontario. I don't know if there's a non-beautiful part, but <laughs> I think where I live is p particularly lovely. But tonight, yes, we are um, facing severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado no, watches and tornado oh. warnings. <laughs> it's so very that, interesting. It always confuses me, the warnings <laughs> and the watches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to read carefully. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it has something to do with probabilities, which yeah. could be a whole I, other uh, episode I, here. <laughs> yeah, actually, I was helping a student today with their uh with some math and we were talking about statistics and just how we use statistics without even realizing that we're using statistics so there you go the warnings right. and the watches are definitely a great example awesome. <laughs> yeah so things are good here awesome good to hear yeah. good to hear um tell us uh tell us a little bit more about uh, yourself tell us our listeners a little bit where you so where you like where specifically in ontario are you and uh, you know <laughs> like and then let's get into a little bit of backstory along shelly like well, how long have you been teaching um and what would that teaching journey look like for you that you know led you to where you are now sure so i am in uh muskoka i live in huntsville i was actually um born here and um I uh, was raised here and thought I was never coming back when I was a teenager and I've ended up living here my life so yeah. this is all good. Um, I, I think in terms of my personal journey, I really have so much gratitude for the opportunities that I've been um, allowed to pursue and through my career. So I started out you know, as a high school student, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do I was okay in math I wouldn't say I saw myself as a particularly strong math student and I know from listening to um, each of you that that's a bit of a common thread amongst us perhaps um, I also knew though that I really didn't want to do a lot of writing so <laughs> Um, I thought my father thought I should be an accountant and I did not want to do that. And so teaching was sort of an option that 
was suggested to me and I thought, okay, why not? And then when I went to university, I did a joint uh, degree in, in math and computers thinking in both cases that would get me out of my um, writing uh, <laughs> career. I had the irony, I'm sure, is not lost on you. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> true, true. So um, I graduated. I actually trained for primary junior education, and I uh, did a concurrent program. So I did, had lots of experience in primary junior and a little bit in intermediate, and then couldn't get a job after I graduated in primary junior but could get a job at the local high school. So mm. I um, went back, got my, my intermediate and senior qualifications and then uh, was successful in that um, endeavor to get a job. But when I got my job, it was, uh, you know, de-streaming was taking a hold at that time. Mm. And um there was a lot of turnover in the math department. And so very quickly, I became the department head very early in my career. Mm. And then um, somehow, and I'm still not sure how, got uh, invited to a meeting at the ministry when they were starting to work on tips and um, did my, uh, went to the meeting and then ended mm. up being involved very heavily in the tips project, which right. is one thing led to another. Right. Now, now, just to, just I want to jump in here. A lot of our listeners, uh, Shelley, wouldn't know what the tips are. Not not Ontario. because not because uh, <laughs> not because everybody in Ontario, especially in the middle school ages, know in Ontario or may have seen that resource. Uh, I know that I have, and it was a great resource when I first started teaching. Um, but we have like majority of listeners here listening to us right now are from the United States or from Australia. Uh, would you right. mind kind of like we'll we'll digress here just a, a light uh, a moment because I think that's a great resource. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and and I've got to say I get so many educators like when the uh, elementary curriculum uh, changed last year. And now with de-streaming back. So there's a lot we can dig into here yeah. based on what you just said. <laughs> uh, but I get emails so often. Educators ask me, do we have any new resources that align with the curriculum like, and most often the blank that's filled in there, that is like tips. And mm -hmm. in particular, our grade nine teachers uh, who, who have taught maybe the, mm -hmm. the grade nine applied uh, course. So tell, tell everybody what that is. I think it's still a really valuable resource, even though maybe it might not be fully connected to the Ontario curriculum in that order. Um, but, but what, where did that start? And, you know, I'm actually curious for my own sake, because I used that resource mm -hmm. for so many years. Um, how did, how did that come to be? And, uh, and, and what is it? Okay, so it's an acronym, and if my memory serves me correctly, <laughs> I think it's Targeted Implementation and Programming Supports, but I might be slightly mm -hmm. wrong with the P there. Uh, and basically, um, Myrna Ingalls was working at the ministry, and she was a secondary teacher from um, the Markham area, which is now York uh, Board. And um, she at that time in Ontario, we had a curriculum which uh, in Ontario states the learning goals for the students, I guess is one way to describe it, unlike in the states where the textbook is the curriculum sometimes. Right. So this is the, our curriculum is a list of things that students will know and do by the end of a grade uh, with no teaching support. So the tips was one of the um, earlier that we had profiles before that, which were also sort of a similar um, project mm -hmm. that were designed to help teachers bridge the gap from this sort of list of expectations to actually programming and, and um, assessing student understanding in the classroom. So uh, the, the program, as uh, many of the projects I've been involved in, seem to do this project started relatively small and then sort of ballooned out to this mm -hmm. massive um, undertaking but our first task was merely to look at the curriculum and um, basically we didn't call it that then but sort of spiral or sequence that curriculum in a way that would make sense and not necessarily be restricted to the strands so that was that was sort of um, task one and then task two was to to get a group of writers and we've been so fortunate in Ontario for so many years 
to have um, writers come from the classroom to do the writing and not be the ministry resource. So it's not, uh, it's actually by teachers for teachers. Mm -hmm. So we had lessons for a lot of the programs. Some courses we had all, some we had some. And we did seven, grade seven, eight, nine to start. And then eventually they did nine, 10, and 11. And when the curriculum changed, they had uh, tips and they called it 4RM. So it was tips for the revised mathematics. And um, then it evolved into research. And, and I think I wouldn't be telling a lie if I said that all of the uh, math these learning tools probably evolved out of that research and uh, and programming work that was done where we said, oh, we need a virtual manipulative for this. And mm -hmm. so then we ended up with um, people writing and creating virtual manipulatives. Love it. I love it. Yeah. And there's so many things. We're just jotting down notes of links <laughs> uh, to throw yeah. in there. So you've got, you know, kind yeah. of two segments of, of listeners or viewers, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, who, whoever's with us on YouTube right now, uh, our Ontario friends who are probably like, yes, I've used these tools and you, you know, they sound familiar. And then everybody else outside of Ontario, uh, folks, you, you definitely want to uh, check yeah. out the show notes. Yeah. They're like, where can um, we get our hands on this? Yeah. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll link them up. The, the beautiful part mm -hmm. about tips is as well is that it is like wide open so it was a resource that was you know available of course people could have stumbled upon it on you know using google or whatnot but if you're from you know the us for example it's unlikely that you know a random math uh, resource would uh, would show up and then the mathies tools i hear are undergoing a little bit of a revamp right now so that uh, you know html5 i know that flash uh, was uh, depreciated. So mm -hmm. um, those tools are are slowly reemerging. So uh, some good links coming out really early here. Um, <laughs> I, I was going to comment on so many things like Muskoka. Uh, you said <laughs> a beautiful part of Ontario. I'm like, I did not realize yeah. you were right in the Muskokas. It reminds me of my childhood. We would go camping uh, or, or cottaging. Uh, camping is probably a little bit, uh, you know, I'm, I'm lying a little there. We were in a cottage and uh, we would go out to Halliburton. Uh, we'd oh. be hanging out at Kashawaga Wigamog Lake. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and I actually have some family out there as well on uh, Boshkung Lake as well. So oh. I know the area as well. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful part of Ontario. So folks who are listening, that's a, a destination uh, for, sure. <laughs> for sure. So let's keep this thing rolling because I know that eventually uh, everybody wants to go to bed tonight. So I, I'm going to I'm going to roll this right along. And I would love uh, to know, you know, Shelly Yearly, when we say the math moment that sort of pops in your mind, you had already referenced that, you know, you didn't really see yourself as like, you know, being necessarily like, you know, super, um, you know, super um, comfortable. No, I shouldn't say comfortable, but uh, no, like, you can say comfortable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With, with mathematics, I would argue I was, I was that kid. I just kind of, you know, I just kind of meandered through and, you know, I, I I'm going to call it a bit of luck and maybe a bit of, you know, uh, opportunity from my family. I sort of ended up doing okay. What What's the math moment that pops into your mind when you think back to your experience in uh, in K to 12 or K, K to beyond 12 uh, mathematics? Well, it's a very interesting question for me. And um, it's not one that I easily answer because I feel like I have had um, I had really good teachers in in school so um, that was you know one thing that I felt I could have picked but I really um, want to just go back to that de-streaming the first iteration of de-streaming in Ontario I was a young teacher newly out of teachers college essentially and um, I had this uh, opportunity to go whitewater canoeing mm -hmm. in um, south of Barry's Bay with the school. Students from the school would go and then teachers would go to supervise and I nice. had my qualifications so I could go and supervise. And two of my math uh, teaching colleagues also wanted to go on this trip. And so we made a plan that we were going to go on the trip, supervise the students, and then um, around the campfire at night, have a talk about what de-streamed grade nine math might look like <laughs> next September. <laughs> right. And so um, we uh, 
work together. So it's not, it's, it's a moment in my career when you look at the timeline, but it's sort of many moments compiled within that year that what we decided to do was um, ask the kids on the first day what they were interested in and list all the topics on the board and then find the math in their topics and map it back to the curriculum and teach by topic. So we did um, building construction, we did astronomy, and we did guitar, um, like music, and then there were others. But and so um, we uh, we we had nothing. You know, we had old textbooks which we cut up and repurposed parts of. Mm -hmm. We literally cut them up. This was the old-fashioned days where you cut stuff and you glued it right. onto cardstock for kids to work yeah. on so there's no dynamic and um <laughs> and we grouped the kids different ways and we obviously had a range this when that de-streaming happened there was no they didn't retain the uh what had been basic or pathways so they merged all three pathways for people who aren't in Ontario that would be workplace college and university all together in one class and um, I I think that's my my math moment because what it did was math had always been to me sort of somewhat uh, uh, theoretical and and I could get it but it was a little bit like uh, a guessing game lots of times and when we started by looking at the the topics of interest of the students and then connecting it connecting the math in to that topic not only did it make it uh, really accessible and understandable to me but what i saw was students starting to value math as a tool that they could use and actually do use in their life instead of a game that you play in school to get right. a grade. Right. And so for me, that was um, astounding. I wouldn't say we did it perfectly. I wouldn't say right. that, um, you know, everybody loved it. And, and there were certainly times where we were exhausted and slightly burnt out. But um, it was a lot of work, but I do think that seeing kids have those moments where they could go home and talk to their parents about what they did in class and their parents could say, yeah, actually, I did the same sort of thing at work today, but on a bigger scale right. was really powerful. Yeah, that's such a such a, a great, uh, a, a great memory that I'm sure that, you you know, that you have and, and such a cool idea to to switch, you know, change what may have been, you know, in our classrooms and, and the way math class may have looked before that moment. <laughs> and, and, and what, you know, with the with the the switching of the D, you know, into, into D streaming way back then, back in the 90s, and it was, and it was, and it was like, this it's come full circle again we're like we're, we're kind of we're, we're doing that this year this year we're also we're going back to de-streaming for our grade nine uh program and and i'm i'm curious i'm curious shelly like you you tried that uh so many years ago and i'm wondering like how like how much of that kind of stuck with you from year to year to you know year and to where you are now like how much of an influence was that one year um carried forward about like how getting the students you know, hooked into what they want to learn about and then tying it back to something practical. Um, I, so I'm, I'm just curious what, what that looked like stretching forward to where your, your role is in education now. So the, um, I would say it's, a, it's been immense on, on many levels. Um, the, one of the biggest things it did for me was I just became a real risk taker because mm -hmm. that's what we did every single day. And, mm -hmm. And it, and I didn't get hung up in a perfect lesson, and I didn't get hung up in, um, you know, I I could stand in front of the class and say, okay, well, we did that yesterday. It worked for some of you, but not for others. So we're going to come back and do something different today. Mm -hmm. And I really think that it helped me to understand uh, the the variety of learning needs within a classroom. Really young in my career, like I think it was my first or second or maybe third year. Um, I, I think I carried all that, uh, the spirit of all of that forward. Um, it's been, I, I was out of the classroom for uh, 19 years. So I went to, I worked at the board for uh, just over a decade. And then I went and did the, 
the research at the ministry and then I return to the classroom. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And uh, yeah, <laughs> well, it's awesome now because it's my third September back. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> such a great experience. You, 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 you come back at the, uh, the, <laughs> the right time, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's like well, I came back from year... the last three school years have been quite the interesting uh, that's school years. <laughs> right. Yeah, I came back and uh, and there was a strike and then a pandemic right. and, yeah. and there were some pretty severe uh, personal issues, not all of which have been resolved and everybody's fine and healthy, but there were some pretty severe personal issues at home that were, were all sort of erupted the minute I walked into classroom, the classroom. And, um, and when I left the classroom 19 years ago, I was taking attendance on a Scantron sheet. <laughs> right. And, and when I came back, we everything was digital so it was um a big upheaval but i do um i do think that that idea about asking kids and giving kids choice um i would say i'm not doing it i haven't been able to do it to that extent because i'm just trying to figure out it's like being a brand new teacher again in many ways mm -hmm. and uh but giving kids choice and not being so uptight about um everybody doing the same thing and and uh and letting them find the math where they find the interest has definitely stayed with me i love it i love it and you know there, there's something interesting that you had said too i know it was early in your career when you know this the the attempt that first attempt at de-streaming um happened uh we'd probably argue maybe it was for different reasons back then you know different <laughs> yes, uh, you know uh, different reasons and purposes um and you know i'd like to believe that We've done so much learning, um, you know, to bring us to where we are today, where we're we're attempting this de-streaming again, and and what you know, what I believe is for the right reasons, um, you know. But something that really resonated with me is sort of what you learned from that experience, because I'm gonna probably argue that educators today feel like they didn't receive a lot of res of support because you know we're coming out of a pandemic um <laughs> you know the uh, curriculum has changed like lots of changes are going on and it just sort of happened but you know the part that really resonated with me and i i believe wholeheartedly that a lot of educators are going to look back on this year this first year of de-streaming for them and they're going to see how much they grew from that experience. So, you know, you sort of, you get put into this spot where you feel like, oh my gosh, I have no idea. I, I, I have a, a colleague who said he was like losing sleep in the summer because, you know, he cares so much and has done things so well. And this particular educator has actually run a really effective grade nine academic and a grade nine applied program. Students love going to the classroom. And it was just, it was a lot, it was really heavy um, trying to, you know, sort of imagine what that's going to look like and sound like because it's just brand new. But, you know, I, I, I really, I believe that educators are gonna look back on this and, and they're going to have grown quite a bit and uh hearing your story uh really i hope others who are listening or are teaching de streaming early and you know they're wondering like how am i going to do this how am i going to you know figure this out that they will figure it out you know and they're they're going and it's not going to be perfect like you had said but we're going to learn a ton and it's going to help impact and influence our our uh career and and how we teach moving forward Absolutely. And um, <clears throat> John Ross was a professor at uh, Trent many moons ago, and he had done some research around consultants and um, how long it took a consultant to become effective in their role. And it wasn't until the third year mm. that the consultant actually kind of had their feet under them and knew how to Man maneuver within the system and and had a good understanding of the work that they were doing and the strategies to do it and that has been another thing that I've really held on to because I feel like as a teacher you know we're all doing the best we can possibly do for our kids at any given min minute and um, we're all hopefully learning a little bit more every day and so you know to to be graceful with ourselves too we would be graceful with students if they couldn't do it perfectly the first time and so we should be graceful with ourselves too mm -hmm. very Absolutely. true yeah very true 
Um, I'm going to keep, uh, keep this. We could talk probably all day about de-streaming math. <laughs> yes. Um, we, and we have in the past. We, did, we didn't even have that on the agenda. <laughs> That's it just sort of yeah. happened. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think uh, it's super valuable to, yeah. uh, to keep things moving along here. Um, we are eager, uh, to dive in, uh, to focus, uh, some of your, your recent work, uh, in math and uh, in particular, uh, when we hear, you know, your name, um, and, and in collaboration with your colleagues, Kathy Bruce and Tara Flynn, and what, what we always hear or what we always think is fractions and uh, what we'd love to do is 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 dive into uh that with you and love to hear like how are you how like like how did you get down this rabbit hole of focusing <laughs> you know you've got a book coming out on fractions you've got some resources on the ministry uh, or i think i think on the ministry websites on fractions uh, on OAME, we're gonna send oh, yeah. people to OAME. OAME, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and so I guess we're before we get into like the 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 meat the meat and the potatoes here, we're wondering uh, like what what led you down this rabbit hole of like this is where I should focus my arguably time and effort. one of the concepts that you know most <laughs> human beings find you know scary and you know <laughs> right it, but yeah. you you all something led you down it so we're really curious to yeah. kind of figure out how how did it come to be. Sure. So um, again, Myrna Ingalls was at the ministry and um, <clears throat> there was an opportunity for some funding and it was called K-N-E-A-R, I think. And it was a knowledge network funding um, opportunity. And it, the Kathy Bruce from Trent University and Myrna uh, wrote a proposal to do some research. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Kathy Bruce and Myrna Ingalls wrote a proposal to do some research and they uh, were granted some money to do this work and it was collaborative action research so they had money to release teachers from classes and meet with them and investigate the area of fractions because it's a known area for um, students and teachers mm -hmm. and adults in general to struggle with. Um, they got them they got the money and um there it is hey yeah for our youtubers i figured i'd give them something to you know have a have a peek at while we're chatting but but carry on i think that's the same thing yep <laughs> okay they've changed the name of it oh i know they i know what they did never mind yeah because it it started out as one knowledge network and then they branched off that's what happened <laughs> Sorry, you'll cut all that nonsense out. Yeah, no sweat, no sweat. <clears throat> um, so anyways, they got the money and then they needed somebody to work at the ministry sort of arm's length to coordinate the research and, and um, be the liaise, if you will. And they asked me to do it. <clears throat> Again, um, just one of those opportunities that I thought I could do. And it was fractions and I was a secondary teacher, so... That was one thing I thought I must have some skill in. So uh, about three weeks into the first uh, month, I'm quite open about the fact that I uh, was wondering how I was going to get out of this so that people <laughs> didn't figure out that I didn't know anything about fractions. <laughs> because once I started digging into it, I realized right. that my understanding was really so superficial. Mm. <clears throat> now so, before, like, before you would go you on, say procedural i, I was like, gonna say shelly like what, yeah. what, what would you elaborate on that point just a moment like why would as a high school teacher why did you all of a sudden think you had this superficial knowledge of fractions well one of the biggest things was i would i was thinking about um and i can still see this moment where a student didn't didn't understand I forget the exact question, but let's say it was um, three times one third, and they didn't understand why the answer was one. So that's easy. I just drew three circles on the board, and I partitioned them each into thirds, and I just told them, see, I've got one, two, three, three thirds. And um, within the first week, I was reading about how challenging circles are as a representation for fractions. And then also, um, Re doing a lot of reading and really reflecting on the ways that we use fractions, the constructs of fractions that we use, and we just sort of fly between them and we don't really unpack them. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, like we often talk about fractions as part whole, 
and that's clear, you know, two thirds of the people on the screen are identify as male, I would say. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, we don't, and then we do use fractions as ratios. So especially in high school, we use, um, we write ratios as a fraction for slope, for example, or for mm -hmm. a tangent ratio, mm -hmm. but we don't actually tell kids that's a well, okay, I didn't actually right. tell kids. I know yeah. some teachers did, but or, or that's we didn't a ratio explicitly. Or part of well. Yeah, like we, yeah. like I, yeah. I totally can like resonate with that. I didn't even realize what I was saying when I said trig ratios. Right. Yeah. But then I wrote <laughs> it as you know one one quantity one. over or, another quantity. That's right. And I just sort of was like, well, that's a ratio. But then yeah. when I defined what a ratio was, it didn't really match what I just did. So then it's like. But don't worry about that. Just yeah. copy it down and you know move on, right? That's the typical sort of approach. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And we had we had um, elementary teachers in our uh, group who were using the language. I think it's actually from the Ontario curriculum previously, uh, part of a whole or part of a set, and part of a set meant part part or, or more like a ratio than and not part of a whole. So we had this messy we kept surfacing these messy things in our, in our curriculum and in our understanding. That, that to me is, it's so interesting because more and more, you know, as I, I was kind of going down the, the proportional reasoning rabbit hole, which obviously you bump into fractions all along that path. And just as you're mentioning, if you go from curriculum to curriculum, I was, I was blessed to be a part of a, a symposium of, you know, different, folks from around North America that came together to essentially kind of discuss different aspects of proportional relationships and proportional reasoning. And, you know, that was one of the things we noted right away was that every curriculum uses its own language, which oftentimes contradict one and one, you know, each other. Mm -hmm. And then you sort of go down and you realize that even some of the research suggests like this researcher is using that language. And then this researcher may not, or may be doing something that, you know, it's sort of like, but then these don't really make sense. And it really <laughs> caused for, I mean, my <laughs> eyes were wide open at that point. And uh, I, I just, I, it's very humbling. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sensing that from what you're saying, where <laughs> you go on and you're teaching in a classroom and you sort of believe, you know, something and, That's right. <laughs> you know, and you sort of realize, oh my gosh, I actually don't have clarity around so many of the ideas that sort of kind of start poking their head out in the junior grades and into those middle grades, you know, yeah. and, and we sort of just gloss over them and kind of move along. That's right. And even uh, young students, we found in our research um, that when we gave students sets and they were in younger grades, primary, junior, that that they would often do a part-part uh, fraction but then at the very same time, they might use part whole reasoning to describe that fraction. Mm. So we had students in one class, it took us forever to figure out what they were doing. Um, but they had taken pattern blocks. And so they had, let's say they had four yellow hexagons and six red trapezoids. So they wrote the fraction four six. Mm. And then on the far side of the page, they had this definition of fraction and that the numerator tells you like sort of the count and the denominator tells you how many you have in the set in total. And so we said, well, but you have four six here. So show right. me the, like, can you connect between this part whole idea and what was part? And they didn't see the discrepancy in that uh, definition. That so is, they just, yeah, like that is so fascinating. But at the same time, it's like when I look at it from the other angle, you sort of go, I guess it makes sense that if we're just kind of doing things and we're hoping, and, and I, I feel like it, we get caught doing this often, is that we sort of hope everyone sort of caught the drift, you know, especially right. when you do an investigation, <laughs> you sort of go like, you know, like, ta-da, like, it's like, yeah, we you were know, hoping. there it is. Yeah. And, and, and at the end of the day, it's like, well, actually, you know, they didn't make that connection, even though I sort of thought, or you think it's maybe so obvious that, Hey, you're, you're going to pick up on that, but yeah. some do and some don't. And, 
Um, just think of how often that happens in a math class from early years all the way, you know, into high school where, you know, enough of those sort of, you know, I hope they kind of picked up on the, the concept without being explicit at the end of a lesson can really, uh, can really be difficult. Well, and I think that's where part of our research is so powerful is that we not only, and, you know, really the credit on this goes to um, Dr. Kathy Bruce and, and Tara Flynn, because they, they, they pay as much attention, if not more, to the teacher content knowledge as they do to the student responses. So when we were doing our research, it was always about working with teachers and building their content knowledge. And then at the same time, trying to figure out what sorts of uh, interventions we could do to support students learning. And um, so that when a teacher saw that in the classroom, they wouldn't just say it was wrong. Right. And mm -hmm that they would say it's actually mathematically correct, but it's not the answer that I was looking for here because I was hoping you would treat this like a whole set or, you know, right. whatever the case may be. And we saw that in other examples. We all use a fraction uh, as a quotient to, to figure out what our score was on a test, Right. but we don't actually ever identify the students or when I say we, I mean in North America, we traditionally don't identify that to students as one of the constructs of a fraction. Mm -hmm. And so when I was in a very, uh, very young class and the teacher wrote a fraction on the board and asked the students what they thought it might be about, and one of the students said division. And because the teacher didn't have that knowledge, they said, oh, no, that's not, that, that's not quite right. Mm -hmm. And so we really also wanted teachers to understand that we use these fractions all these different ways. And, you know, and yeah. we would often say when we were out working with teachers, this is an activity for you. This yeah. is not an activity for you to go and do with your students. This is a teacher activity so that you understand. We use fractions in multiple ways and very fluently and not realizing the difference between those. Right. Right. And in your research, did you like, uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, let's say I'm a, I'm a teacher and I, and I'm starting to work with, you know, uh, I'm getting into the, you know, the adding of fractions and, and the, and eventually we'll be getting into the multiplying of fractions, but I'm a teacher at that level and why I'm not throwing at a grade level, just because some of our listeners are different, you know, yeah. they're, they're at different places in, in, uh, the curriculum or the standards of, of when they were going to do that. But, but I'm wondering like in your research, like if I'm a teacher who is traditionally taught fractions uh, that very procedural way and in, in the way I, I I imagine it the way sometimes I see my kids bring home stuff and this is the way fractions are are taught about adding fractions multiplying and multiplying fractions um what would you what would you recommend if because we have teachers are listening to this so it's it's kind of like what would you recommend to that listener right now saying like this is where you'd want to start like you've 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 mentioned uh that it, it definitely has to part of this has to start with with educating the teacher and getting their content knowledge up so there's that piece but also like where would the teacher what lessons would the teacher start with or or you know what what tip or or starting point could you get a, a teacher who wants to kind of make this transition uh to be less procedural but start to like build this content knowledge and then help their kids build that content knowledge uh, I would start by asking them what they know, and you'll probably be amazed at what they do know. Right. And um, we've done that in very young classes. We've asked uh, grade four students to just say what they know, and, and kids will describe different things. Like they say there's an infinite number of uh, fractions between any whole numbers, and the teacher's jaw hits the table <laughs> because right. the teacher mm -hmm. didn't talk about that yet. So I would start by asking students what they know. And then I think the other thing would be to pick up on the idea of the unit fraction. So a unit fraction is any fraction that has a one in the numerator. Mm -hmm. So one half, one third, one fourth, those are very familiar ones, but it could be one uh, one thousandth or one two million five hundred sixty two. It doesn't matter. As long as it has a one in the numerator, it's a unit fraction. And the the power of unit fractions is that every other fraction is uh, a sum and a product of 
those unit fractions. So if you think of any fraction, three right. sevenths, it's one seventh plus one seventh plus one seventh. And if you want to write that as a multiple, it would be three times one seventh. So when we first started our research, actually, we would have said, if I was talking to you 10 years ago, I would have said, well, that in Ontario is like a grade seven, eight concept. But now I actually say that in any location is a primary concept totally. because students right away, as soon as they start representing, see that they add fractions by uh, counting up the numerators and retaining that unit of sevenths in the example I did, just like they add measurements together one centimeter plus two centimeters mm -hmm. is three centimeters. I don't change my my unit of centimeters. And uh, that when they can connect that addition and multiplication, then using the inverse operations, connecting subtraction to addition and division to multiplication make that so much easier. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. And, you know, you sort of uh, took the words out of my mouth. I wanted to talk about the unit fraction. I'm so happy you <laughs> gave that example because I think, you know, from, and I was thinking as John was asking that question, I was almost going to like jump in and say like, I'm wondering if you're a teacher, especially if you're, let's say, uh, middle years or higher and you're going, how do I do this if I'm, you know, a lot of times I think teachers have this pressure, they feel this pressure that they're like so far down the line that they're like, how do I go all the way back to sort of help make something conceptual? And I, I think the unit fraction is such a great, such an easy way to start, especially since, you know, you gave the example of measurement and centimeters or inches or feet. Um, but I mean, the examples go on and on and on. I could talk about <laughs> thousands or I can talk about, you know, uh, X's or That's I can, right. you know, like you, all of these ideas. Pies. Yeah. When you get to radian I was, measure. I was going to, as soon as you said this counting, I was, yeah. I was thinking about radian measure in your unit circle too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like to me, that was such yeah. a, an epiphany for us thinking about the unit fraction that it's been right there like it's been there mm -hmm. the whole time but we didn't really know it was there we didn't really know how helpful it could be and it also brings me back as well uh working in the primary classroom and talking with teachers about you know why it could be helpful before we use let's say standard notation to use you know uh the actual uh unit fraction as a unit like right. writing it like you know in words so mm -hmm. like one fifth and mm -hmm. two fifths like if you ask young children how many fifths do i have in total it's like how many cookies do i have in total how many you know centimeters. socks do mm -hmm. i have how many centimeters how many fifths do i have in total and it, it becomes like very intuitive much like how mathematics really could be if you know if we do things conceptually so to me that's a mind-blowing piece and dare i uh mention uh the fractions learning pathway is such a great place as well to, you know, when I'm thinking if, if someone's thinking, they're like, well, how do I learn more about this? I'm going to like steal this right from you and say <laughs> the fractions learning pathway is such a great uh, a tool because it's like PD, but also provides activities and resources for students. Uh, I'm going to bring it up on the screen. Do you mind Perfect. sort of giving us maybe kind of like a you know, a general idea of like, what is the, the fraction learning pathway and, you know, sort of how, how might an educator sort of dive into this mm -hmm. tool and, and, you know, how do you see it being used? Sure. So um, when, we, as I mentioned, we started the research with uh, Kathy, we had a one year grant. It, it quickly became an eight year <laughs> project while well, it Don't sort they of morphed all. into an eight-year project. Uh, and then over that time, we just were accumulating so much uh, learning that we wanted to provide a really uh, easy to understand um, resource for teachers. But actually, can you go not to Edugains? Can you go to... Yeah, um, I think it's learning... Fractions, learn, learning fractions. pathways with an S on the end dot ca right yep okay just i yeah there, there we go perfect one. okay so this one this site's a little bit more updated than the edge game so we wanted to create a visual reference for teachers so they could just hold this in their head and uh 
when they're instructing, they could use it as a bit of a tool to help see where their students are at. So you'll see there's three colors. Uh, the green is unit fractions and really emphasizing unit fractions. And also just to say, looking at the fact that as soon as a student starts to talk about any fraction, they automatically have to think about the complement, which just goes back to your idea about addition. So if I think about having one fourth of something, I'm automatically realizing I don't have the other three fourths to make the whole. Mm. And so that's that implicit uh, addition for students to, that we can build on. So you'll see here for unit fractions, I won't read them all, but there are six uh, cells and they're not necessarily linear. They're definitely connected. And we notice that as students move through, they can um, sometimes leapfrog. We've noticed um, by highlighting some things over others. Uh, comparing fractions then gets into comparing and equivalence and also that idea of density, which is very, uh, was previously very under played in our Ontario curriculum. So students didn't actually get a lot of experience with looking for fractions between fractions or between numbers. Mm. And then lastly, on this version is the addition and subtraction. And you'll notice just at the left side, it's um, focusing on counting and decomposing and decomposing much in the same way that we would work with students around their whole number operation sense. So we really try to build that in so that it uh, is a more natural and um, transition for students. And then if you scroll down, <laughs> you'll see the purple, which Ooh, is... Ooh, this is uh, new since I've been our, here. Yeah, you got to come to this site, not the Edge Games. So this is um, our parallel for multiplication and division. What one thing I will just say is often we think multiplication and division is easier as if we just think about instructing using the algorithm, mm -hmm. um, we might think that's the easier of the two, but you can see the size of that um, the pathway is almost the same as all the other put together. Yeah. Um, now, if you click on any one of these cells, mm. uh, they should be hyperlinked. I'm really hoping this works. Oh, yeah, Good. totally, totally. Perfect. And so each one of those cells is hyperlinked to a page that gives you a, um, some more information on that concept. And then um, you'll see on the right hand side, most of them have tasks. They also have additional prompts. And then for Ontario folk, they have the curriculum connections, but I have to tell you that's to the old curriculum. So you may have to do a little, little bit of work on that. Mm -hmm. But um, we did put some information in there to help teachers with those instructional challenges. I love it. I love it. This is this is fantastic. And we've used this in my district uh, quite a bit. And, and again, has really aided in my own understanding of fractions and what is really happening there. And I couldn't agree more about uh, about the operating with multiplication and division yeah. that again. <laughs> You know, an algorithm is not very helpful. Like you have to sometimes stop and wonder, like how often are you multiplying fractions in real life with an algorithm, right? Like you're probably <laughs> going to use a calculator. So there's so much opportunity for reasoning when we actually, mm -hmm. you know, do the work, when we actually dive in and actually look at what it really means. And all of this work here is so key for us to be gaining a, a real understanding. And I, I'm just sitting here thinking if there's an educator listening right now and you're going, you know, I think we can all raise our hands. Lots of <laughs> students struggle with fractions. Mm -hmm. There is so much even just right here that could get you thinking maybe a little bit differently and, and helping you so that you stop spinning your tires. Because I know I've done it in many, many concept areas, but in particular in fractions, you spin your wheels where you just keep doing the same thing over and over again, right? Louder and Absolutely. slower. That's not a <laughs> really, a, yes, yes, exactly. So there's so much yeah. to, uh, to dive into here. And yeah. um, I, I also want to give you an opportunity. I know you have a book coming out with your colleagues, your, we'll call them, uh, you know, partners in crime. We have to think of like a fractional name. Yeah, the, I know, the trio, we need something. The, <laughs> the thirds. I don't know, but uh, tell us a little bit more about the uh, the upcoming book 
and uh, and you know where and when people might be able to uh, to find that. Sure, I will. I'm going to ask that you actually just, I just want to talk a little bit about this website for sure. one second. Yeah, so if absolutely. you go to the top, mm -hmm. so right now you're on the pathways and then you can see there's classroom resources. So mm -hmm. all of the tasks are organized there and people can go just find a ta like oh, different beauty. tasks. Mm -hmm. But then nice. the piece that people might appreciate is um, the next two uh, links at the top so sorry the last one the research link but there are three links in that res oh sorry yeah yeah okay so I just noticed I forgot I've been writing the book and not working on the website so I noticed that also in uh, classroom resources there are maps to show people how they might those planning supports show people how they might mm. use this resource cool. across the span of a grade. And then in the, um, yeah, so those are all hyperlinked Love by it. month concept. We had our teachers track what they were doing and then they collated that information into a Very sample nice. for people. And then under the research, we have um, three really strong lit reviews that we've written. And, and um, they go into depth about the cultural uh, practices on instruction of fractions. So people may find that interesting to read through. And then we have sort of shorter summaries for people who don't care to read the 50 whatever page, <laughs> however many pages those things are. Uh, so we have some short, they're two pages, generally speaking, some maybe four. And for leaders, there are two more tabs there. So if you're running professional learning, there's a couple of tabs. Or if you're interested in watching some videos, there's some tabs there that you can find more I love it. Um, I love awesome, information. Awesome so it's really packed full. There's much more here than on EduGains. Just uh, the, we decided to transition to uh, a, a format that was more AODA, AODA compliant. And so there's lots housed here that's not on edge games. And then, um, but you can see there that the focus of that is mostly classroom practice with a, a bit of professional learning and support for uh, board mm -hmm. personnel. And so then um, what we did when we did our research was we uh, had a diagnostic assessment that we used with students to sort of do a pre and post to figure out is, is what we're doing making any difference at all. <laughs> right. And so for the book, what we've done is we've taken those, uh, oh yes, there we are. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, for the book, what we've done is we've taken those assessments and we've identified eight core concepts for fractions that all evolve around the idea of the unit fraction and the importance of the unit fraction. Fantastic. And so we've taken those questions those concepts and we've got uh, two or three tasks for each concept as well so the idea is that as a teacher you have these grade 9 d stream students in front of you and you don't know where they're at with fractions you can pick some questions administer them we have um, a nice straightforward uh, scoring or coding guide that we unpack for you with the questions and you can um, figure out where your students are at, where their needs are, and then pick the task or tasks that best uh, will build their knowledge the way that we need it to be built. Love it. That's mm -hmm. great. great so it's sort of the missing link out of this piece is the that assessment uh, and the tasks. Beautiful. This is mm -hmm. great. There is so much more here than uh, <laughs> than the last I had visited. Uh, but uh, yeah, th this is fantastic. This was um, when we were really diving in and doing a lot of our learning, we were diving in here. There's a lot there. And now you have this additional piece. There is so much. So we will definitely be linking that mm -hmm. up in the show notes. Um, right. I'm so happy we had the conversation so that now I'm, you know, I'm getting, <laughs> uh, you know, re-exposed here to some mm -hmm. of the resources. So thank you so much for that work. And uh, I'm wondering, you know, I, I know we're we're going. This one's turned into a long one, John. We got yep. talking again. This <laughs> we've been trying to get better at this, uh, uh, but I I'm wondering there, Shelley, if you know 
we have some educators from all around the world, different grade levels. If there's one thing that you would like them to take away from this conversation today, there's so many different pieces that I'm sure they could walk away with, but what, what would be the big, big piece that you'd like them to walk away with today when they think back to this particular episode? I think uh, it might be fair to say a recurrent theme has been that uh, it's very important to make connections um, both for teachers and students. And I think one of the things that we do a lot is we focus on making connections to, I don't know, something we call daily life or mm -hmm. real world connections. And that is quite ambiguous because, you know, none of us have a common daily life. Uh, but I think more than that, it's important to make connections to other content areas for students so that no matter where they end up, they understand if they're counting radian measure or if they're counting pieces of pizza, that they're counting unit fractions and they can do that in the same way. Hmm. So I feel like, um, you know, in, in the work that we do, whether we're in the classroom or at a, a district level or even at a provincial or state level, that um, helping people to see the deep connections that exist between mathematical concepts is probably one of the most important uh, things that we can do. And I think when we do that with students and we say to a student, you know what, you are great at uh, counting by centimeter. So let's just take that and apply that to counting by unit fractions. And then let's build on that. Mm. We help build student efficacy. And we know that that is uh, the, the piece that we need to have in place to have students be successful. So yeah, that's, that's a great takeaway. And uh, thank you for sharing that for sure. Um, we, as, as Kyle said, we're going to put all the links that you shared here uh, in the show notes page. So if you want to dive into what we've been talking about, uh, head on over to our show notes page, stay tuned for the link to that. Um, but uh, Shelly, where can uh, our listeners learn a little bit more about you? Uh, have you got a book coming? You, you've got that book coming out. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe give them a heads up of, of where they can uh, learn about that, but also learn about how they could could learn more from you. Sure. So I think the fractionslearningpathways.ca definitely has a lot of uh, resources on it. Um, the uh, book is called Rethinking Fractions, Eight Core Concepts to Support Assessment and Learning, and it's uh, being published by Pearson Education Canada. And I believe it's a January release date, uh, January 2022. And so they can get more information there. Awesome. Um, I am on Twitter, but I've actually taken a little bit of a break from Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> For people not in Canada, we are having a federal election and I just haven't been able to uh, bring myself to spend <laughs> right. much time on Twitter these days. <laughs> So, um, but not, but people can uh, reach me through Twitter. I do still monitor the awesome. email and stuff. So we'll, uh, we'll be putting awesome. those, uh, those links to the books and, uh, and your Twitter all on the show notes page as, uh, as Great. well. Shelly, thanks so much for joining us here on uh, the podcast. Uh, we, uh, we always learn so much from our guests and especially uh, from you tonight uh, and uh, looking forward to putting these things into practice. And I hope our listeners are as well. So thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for all of the time and effort that you put into this. I've been enjoying so many of the podcasts and um, I find it's a great way to sort of re refresh and re-energize myself. So I'm delighted to be a part of it. Awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much for your work. And uh, I'm sure we will bump into you soon. Hopefully we've been saying, <laughs> I feel like John, we've been saying it for like two years mm -hmm. now, hopefully at a face-to-face -face yeah. conference sometime <laughs> keep soon, keep we will bump here. into you. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Right. Have a great night. And uh, we look forward to, uh, as always, my friends, uh, both John and I learned so much. And actually, we were chatting with uh, mm -hmm. Shelly after the call, just about how we learn so much from recording this, these podcasts and these episodes. Uh, we get some benefit out of like doing the thinking ahead of time. You know, what questions are we going to ask? We get to do the learning during the episode. And then finally, uh, we get to do the learning as we write the show notes page. Mm -hmm. So the question we have for you is, how are you going to ensure that the learning sticks so they don't wash away like footprints in the sand?
Yeah. So a great way to hold yourself accountable is uh, to you know, write it down or, hey, even better, call a colleague or talk about it with your partner. Um, you know, these are all great, great methods to help you kind of like, you know, formalize what you've learned here uh, in this episode. You could also uh, hit us up on our social media channels and connect with us and share the learning with us. Uh, head on over to at make math moments on the social media, or you can head to our private Facebook group, uh, math moment makers K to 12. Yeah. And make sure to uh, this episode and many of the other episodes are being recorded with video on YouTube. Uh, so they're coming out each week, plus all the other YouTube com uh, co content. So make sure to go in there, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and leave us a comment there. Uh, mm -hmm. Remember, show notes and links to resources, including full transcripts, uh, as well as today, remember that fraction learning pathway, the link and the resources to even tips and all of those great resources mm -hmm. can be found over on the show notes page at makemathmoments.com forward slash episode 150. Again, that is makemathmoments.com forward slash episode 150. Well, until next time, Math Moment Maker friends, I'm Kyle Pierce. And I'm John Orr. High fives for us and a high five for you.